So uh, the next speaker is Christian, who's going to tell us about Sharp Free Extension over Finite Fest. Okay, first, thank you for the invitation to be here. It's a great uh, pleasure for me to be talking in this place and in this uh, school. And also, thank you for the introduction. Today, I will talk a little bit about a topic that uh, is kind of related with the last talk and the first mini course. And maybe for some of you, like this, so there are many like uh, important words in this title. First, like chart for extensions inequalities. Like there are some people here that are very great experts in this topic in, in, in the Euclidean case. And also the other critical word here is like the finite fields. That is, I will try to enter into, to introduce both topics and then to see, to see how they relate. This is a joint work uh, with Joe, Oliveira, and Silva. Okay. So, sorry. In general, like uh, there are in our there is there are connections between harmonic analysis and other kind of problems in mathematics. At least here, uh, just a few. For instance, you have like the the connections between like the problems in strip packing with some sharp constants in uncertainty principles in, uh, in in harmonic analysis, and also like what we the one that is more critical for us will be like the connections between Kaya problems and, and restriction estimates. So this in the in the, in the left hand side we, we find problems that are in some way uh, you can you can think of as first so that they are unrelated with harmonic analysis, but there are some very deep connections, and I will talk a little bit about them uh, today. So one very nice problem that some of you may know, but for the one that you do not know, it's always a good opportunity to learn about this problem. It's the Kakeya problem on Earth. So. So the question is the following. What is the smallest area in which if you are in the plane and you have a segment so of length one and you want to, to see if you can rotate that segment in the plane using the minimum amount of space possible? So that's the question. It's like, uh, what is the best way that you can do that? So the natural examples that I... 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 <laughs> I could think of at first would be like the first two here. First is the circle, is like the first thing that you can try. You just can rotate that circle. <laughs> and if, but it's not a very efficient thing to do. In fact, you can get a triangle and you get something better. As a equilateral triangle, you go to the corner, you just rotate the triangle, you move to the other corner, you rotate, you rotate, and you get to the, the whole like 180 degrees uh, of, the, of the plane. So, and up there are some kind of uh, slightly more sophisticated things that get something slightly better, like the cycloid. That you just take the screen one and you move it while you're rotating. So, uh, so we call it like a Kaya set, it's like a, just a compact set in RD that have this property, that you have each segment of length one in each direction. So all these, all these sets are Kaya sets, but they are not as interesting as the ones that we will uh, learn about a little bit later. So, for instance, we have the following result. We have that there exists a Gekeya set in RD with zero leveling measure. So you have like a, a very small set in which you can you have a segment in each direction. And that is kind of, for, for me, the first time that I, that I learned this, it was kind of magical. Okay, so the construction is something like this. You can, there are several ways of doing it. Uh, one of these is just to, to, to do, to take a triangle, a lateral triangle and to cut it in some way. Uh, and you self-intersect the triangle and you repeat and you get, you keep the property at the beginning, like you have a segment in each direction. And you repeat this process many times and you get some kind of, <laughs> of this like a modern art <laughs> figure of not in, to get some, Something like that, you iterate the process and you and you get a, a set of arbitrarily small measure. But once we get uh, like that, we know that something has measure zero, uh, 
or I can't have meter zero, like the next step would be like to see there are other ways more refined to know like how small, how big is a set. So like the a natural way of know, of thinking it would be like to to see if this set has like a full like a house of dimension, for instance. So that's, that's the question. Like the set has house or dimension, full house or dimension or not. The examples that I present and all the examples that are that are known have this property that have full house or dimension. So that motivates people to think like a, uh, to, to write down this conjecture. The conjecture is like, is the is like any Kakeya said in, in RD, uh, has like the house of dimension D. That is like a very famous conjecture and it was only solved in dimension two. And there are like many people that have worked like a lot in trying to, to get this done in, in higher dimensions. Okay. In, on the other side, we have this, uh, this theory that uh, Alex, uh, Professor Alex, like talked recently about the Fourier restriction theory on RD. Like in general, we try to, to get some estimate of this kind with for, for some surface uh, here or with some curvature. In, in general, uh, the motivation of thinking about this could be like. Uh, well, we know that for like a, the riemann lebesgue theorem, if you get a function that is integrable, the, the Fourier transform of that function is, uh, is like continuous and it's nice. So, but in, on the other hand, you, if you have a function in L2, since you have like the Fourier transform is an isometry between these spaces, uh, you can get whatever you want in the, in the, in the Fourier side. So, in some way, like the restriction theory tries to study how this, uh, how is this phenomena to which uh, p in the middle between L1 and L2 you can get. Uh, and that is measured in some way using, depending on the surface that you want to... So you, if you have a continuous function, you can restrict to a continuous function, uh, to the function to that, direct, uh, to that uh, set, to any set. Um, well, so you want to, to try to do that in in the whole in the whole range is not possible, but you want to see between one and two what is like the the, the right p in which this works. So this can be uh, written down as this, like for which uh, exponent this inequality, inequality holds. Well, this is So the restriction conjecture, they like try to establish what which are the ones p and q that to switch that uh, this inequality holds, and they say that these are the followings. That these uh, numbers come from like the, the most natural examples that you can think in the in the sphere. Like one is like the once you go, you see the dualized problem, one one is like the just the constant, and the other ones are like the something that is called a nap example. That is kind of you are accumulating mass in some in some space in, in the surface. So then the curvature plays a, a role. So, but these, these numbers are not so important, but that is what is called the restriction conjecture. They are, they are very important, but they are not so important for the, for the talk today. In fact, uh, uh, this time Thomas uh, Result in 1975 tried to uh, solve uh, this, uh, this problem, got the optimal, uh, optimal exponents for when, this, when the constant Q is equal to 2, when the exponent is 2. And you get to this point. That is called like the Stein Thomas uh, endpoint. And this is this case will be very important for us uh, later. Okay, uh, here curvature plays a significant role. Like uh, you need to have some kind of, uh, as like uh, as Professor Josevich mentioned before, if you get something that is completely flat, you cannot expect to get some some restriction. So if you have some kind of uh, curvature, many full curvature, you can expect to get some, some kind of uh, like a restriction estimate. Like these are the most canonical examples that come from, that are related, are connected with some PVs. Uh. Okay, <laughs> so this kind of like, Functional inequalities that we were studying 
are in some way inter interesting because for many things, but one of them is just the, that they imply the Kakeya conjecture. So if this inequality holds for all the things here is conjecture, we know that this problem of the beginning of like the symmetric measure kind of problem holds too. So that is kind of a good motivation, at least for, at least for me. So, but also, uh, this restriction conjecture implies something stronger that is called the maximal Kakeya conjecture. Uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, like try to get some estimates uh, of a maximal function connected to the Kakeya sets. Uh, and also, it's also connected to with this, uh, with this well, they are called like this smoothing conjecture and boundary risk conjecture. They are, they are implied by the, no, in the, other, the other direction. They imply the restriction conjecture. So in some way we can see that it's a very central topic in analysis. So when you say Katya conjecture is implied and implied by restriction conjecture, that means directly restricting restriction to the Kakea conjecture, not by a maximal Kakea. Um, I think that uh, well I don't know what is what is the difference. <laughs> But this is just uh, you, you can uh, you can do it in any way, like you can do it directly. Like, but logically, it's, it's more or less the same. Like you can go for in, intermediate steps. Right. Okay. 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 There are some also connections with in the PDE's case with the so-called like strict car estimates. Um, also. I want to say that all these conjectures are only known to be true for the, in dimension two, so in the plane. It's like a wide open in, in higher dimensions. Okay. In fact, like the smoothing conjecture in dimension two was just recently solved, like in a few years ago. Okay. Uh, so I I stole the diagram from somewhere <laughs> about the restricting conjecture. So. In the in the blue in the blue section we, we have like what we, what we know like since Stein Thomas like these are the exponents in which like we already know like this is like you know like the restriction conjecture there is like this red section in which is is open and there is like a slightly to the right uh, a small region in which is uh, was solved but but for more sophisticated methods and I think that the first one that went like farther than the and the, this called Stein Thomas, Stein Thomas endpoint was like Borgen that uh, really studied deeply like some connections with Kakeya sets. So, so this is like a, what well, is still a very open in, in, high, in dimensions higher than two. Okay. So in general, when you when we have like some Inequality in analysis. It's a very natural thing to think uh, to ask about uh, if is this inequality sharp, and also in general, uh, that gives you like additional information about the original inequality, and also uh, like allows you to to try to study some deeper problems about like the stability of this kind of inequalities. So when, once we have like some uh, Fourier restriction estimate. Like a very natural thing is try to find like when is this uh, when is this inequality sharp? What is the best constant that we can put in, in front of the inequality? And also what are the extremizers? Like that would like allows you to understand like the, the inequality much better. So let us define for now like what is the called uh, the extension operator. That is just uh, you, we have a function in a in a surface and we extend it like by the Fourier inversion inverse function. It's just this formula right here, where this uh, here is the measure of the surface. So like the, the previous uh, restriction theory that I, I told you about, it translates by duality to, to, this, uh, to this inequality here. It would be nicer for us to treat uh, for, for reasons that I will uh, tell you about later. So now what we are interested is like to try to, to understand how is what how is this uh, first in the cases in which in which we know that this inequality holds. We want to know 
in which case we can we can find like an optimal inequality in this in this cycle. This is and also uh, we are also very interested in trying to, to find the extremizers of this of this inequality. Okay, so let's go ahead. So also this is connected with, the, as I told you before, to some, um, some some estimates for some solutions of PDs. In particular, if you get the Schrodinger equation and the, the, the homogeneous one, uh, we we can get some estimates of for the sorry, for the solutions of this inequality for the, of this uh, PD, and we get uh, exactly this. So what would uh, these sharp inequalities in the in the extension side, we'll translate in this case, we'll translate to, ju to just uh, a sharp inequality for this extension, for these estimates over the solutions of the of the B. So that's another <coughs> another way of motivating it. So, so since I told you before, like the um, in the case when the P is equal to two, so when this uh, exponent here is equal to two. Uh, we know we know what is uh, what was done by Stein and Thomas. Therefore, and this is like the case in which the proof is, is nicer. Therefore, it's like the first place in which we can expect to get something sharp. So that that could be like the the first uh, uh, starting point to try try to think about this kind of inequalities. In general, to get like some sharp inequalities in, in in the life, you need to be very like so in the. In the place in which you hope to be lucky, it would be like in the cases in which like the, the, the starting inequality has like a nicer proof. And in this case, the staying Thomas endpoint would be like the, a good starting point. And also, so we are trying to understand this when this kind of inequality holds. So in particular, the case in which we have an even exponent uh, in this in, in the right, in the left hand side. It's nicer because because we have this uh, this very nice uh, like Planchier identity that implies that we can translate this uh, Fourier estimate, estimate in this side to a, a positive problem in the other side that is just a convolution. So here you, you translate. Uh, so if this exponent is an even number, an even integer, this uh, this expression here is just like a del two norm of a of a convolution. So this is like a, a very nice for our, our methods, or the methods that are known. Look, so a very nice result was established uh, by Foskey in the early 2000s, where he proves that when you take like the, the paraboloid and then with the projection measure, you get the, the following that the following inequalities uh, from L to L4. And also for from L to L six, in the the first one is for the paraboloid in, in the space, and the second one is for the parabola in the plane. That these two inequalities are maximized by Gaussians. So this is like a, I think it was the first result in, in this kind of uh, direction, and it's, and the proof is very nice. So I will try to explain to you a little bit about that now. So, okay, so it's just I'm doing two exponents. So here we have like uh, two exponents, uh, an even number here and another even number here, and we get the, like the the sharp constant here. And our they are, they are maximized by Gaussians. So you can think like first it's like the. Uh, yeah, excuse me. So you know it for four and six, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, like I would talk a little bit about that later. There are some more results. But uh, these kind of problems are you need to be very lucky to solve them. So, in, in particular, uh, they, that's the starting point. So, so these are kind of nice results. But, but they are sharp estimates. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so this kind of uh, these constants are optimal. So. Since Gaussians are the extremizers here, you can also think, well, these, these functions are very nice. Maybe they are examples for are the right examples for other exponents. But it turns out that that is not true. That was proved by 
my previous and the major other hand, that they show that the for this kind of well, in order to be extremized for this, for this inequality, they also need to be uh, critical points to some equations. Uh, so, and, and that is, and so in particular, they are not critical points or, or, or needed extremizers. Whenever this exponent in the right hand side is, is not to, so it's a particular case, of, it's a particular kind of situation uh, for B equal to. And you're going to expect to have like a another like third form of the extension estimate when when p is different from two, at least with Gaussians. So a little bit of the sketch of of Oskis proof that is uh, more that is relevant for us. It's that uh, he concluded uh, using the symmetries of the equations uh, that are connected connected to the uh, to the parabolas. He, he proved that uh, these convolutions are, are constants on their supports. So what does, does it mean? Uh, maybe I can, I can draw some picture. So if you have, uh, let's start with the, I will do it in right here, so if, so you have like the, the parabola, Okay, no, not, the, not the best drawing, but you have the paraboloid in, in L3, and you have like a major that is supported in, in, the, in the surface of the paraboloid. The, the convolution, the, two con the two-fold convolution of this, of this major will be something like this. So you take the, the paraboloid and it duplicates in some way. So, okay, so it gets like the a more wide, a wider version of the parabola, and inside the parabola, this, uh, this, this, inside this bigger parabola, like the measure, the convolution measure is constant. So that is one of kind of, of a magic thing that happens in, in this case, and that is the support of the. Of the of the major because also that's the the, the support of the sum sets of the of the points in the in the parabola. So this magic uh, kind of uh, result allows allow us to use like a a, a very nice Cauchy Schwarz estimate that always is there it's always there to help us to estimate the first we translate the problem in L4 to a convolution uh, to the convolution version that I mentioned before. We apply Cauchy Schwarz here. Here, the support is just this set that I just set here. And then, since this uh, function here is constant, in inside the support, um, we can take the, the convolution out, estimated, estimating it by the supremum that is just a constant inside the, the convolution. And we use a, a, another Fubini, Fubini theorem just to, to take that this is. The integral here is just this uh, estimate, here, this uh, integral here. So we get exactly what we needed at the, at the beginning. Like an L, this is just an, an L4 estimate for the Fourier transform into like the, the comparing with the L2 uh, norm of the function. So, and, and, and it turns out that this inequality is sharp. So if you get a constant function, no, no, a Gaussian, in the in the in the parabola, you get equality in each step. So this is a very nice thing to. So. And is it known if there are other critical points? Like other other maximizers, like uh, they are completely classified. Like uh, there are other, there are, but uh, they are in the same in the spirit. They are uh, just uh, Gaussians. They are some kind of uh, symmetry symmetrizations. So you take a, a Gaussian and you move so you move it the Gaussian a little bit without uh, changing like the structure, and you get the, all the extremizers more or less. Okay. And even even critical points because no. you ah, said critical points no no oh. critical points are like uh, I think Gaussians are the only known critical points. Only known. Gaussian end of course the multiplication. Yeah yeah. Okay. You translate it. Yeah I, I, well the, you can classify the. 
Well, you get, you get the that they, they are, those are the only extremizers. Now, for the critical points, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, well, I, I knew it at some point. I don't remember. I don't remember, but since uh, we're more interested in kind of like inequalities, this is the, the main thing. So well, uh, here we have two two equalities. So it's just uh, each equality here gives you like a, a functional equation that you need to treat in order to get the uh, if you want to classify the, the extremizers. Okay. So there are other results in other geometric uh, surfaces, like uh, for instance what the uh, Posky also did in the in the one sheeted cone. That is just uh, a cone that is those. This is just in the upper upper. The upper side. <laughs> so he proved that also like uh, some derivation of expon the exponentials are the only maximizers for the turbine inequality. And the proof it follows a similar spirit, studying first what is the convolution of the of the metro that is contained in the in the cone. Okay, and there are other kind of chart results. For instance, uh, it was proved by First, in, in this case, even like to try to get the existence of a, of a maximizer is not like a, an easy task, in particular when the, in the endpoints. So first, it was proved by, by Chris and Chow that in, in, the, in, the, in the two sphere that the maximizers exist. Then it was proved in, in, in S1 that the maximizer exists. It's a different problem. Okay. Also, constants are the only real maximizers in it was proof later that with a, with a different result in a different way that the constants are the only real only real maximizers in the L2 L4 extension for the sphere. Um, but there are more results for in this case for the for the sphere and there are in general uh, this is a kind of not so easy to write down, but I think it was first in, in the L2L, uh, L2L4 estimate was uh, done by Carneiro and Oliveri Silva. And for higher um, kind of uh, L2 to L2K was proved by Oliveira Silva and René Guilora. Oh, this, all this in dimension between 3 and 7, the other case are not, uh, are not done. Uh, it's a still another problem for higher dimensions. But I think that uh, I think that it could be said that it's a conjecture that this is uh, constants are extremizer for higher dimension. Maybe it's an open problem. So also, like the same problem for the circle is still like a, a very interesting open problem that has like uh, many people have think about it. It's just uh, you try you you write the you take a circle in the plane. And you compute the Fourier extension with the surface, and you try want to estimate what is the best constant that you can put here for this inequality to work. And this is uh, conjecture to be maximized by, by constants. Um, there are many like uh, partial progresses in this direction due to Carneiro, Foschi, and Oliveira Silva and Chris of Chile, where they prove uh, like they prove this based assuming some conjectural results. Uh, Valentina Chicone and Felipe Gonzalez proved it for, for some subfamily of functions here. Um, Lars Becker recently proved it for another subfamily of here where, where the functions are concentrated in, in two uh, opposite extremes of the circle. But it's still, I guess, a wide open problem as far as I, as I know. So if you want to try it, you're invited. So now we will talk about the other kind of uh, medical work in the, in the title, and that's what uh, what was introduced a little bit by, by the previous talk. It's about uh, what can we say about these kind of inequalities in infinite fields. So this is what uh, for the people that here that are not <laughs> experts on, on on finite fields, this is what you need to know. It's not very much. It's just uh, first. That if you have a finite field, uh, the cardinality of the of a finite field is just a power of a prime, 
that and this prime will be the characteristic of the of the of the field. Also, that for each power of prime you have a, a finite field, and in general you can uh, you can obtain them by uh, tweaking the quotient of the, of, our, of the ring of polynomials by uh, by a polynomial of the a resolute polynomial of degree n, and you get all the finite fields like that. Also, all the finite fields of of the same size are isomorphic, and so and in many ways in general. So that is in, in general you refer to a finite field just by the number of uh, of elements that they have. Okay, so that is like what you should know about algebra at the beginning. Okay. So the interest or in it, uh, of restriction theory in, in finite fields was uh, first uh, brought by Guillermo Mogenhaupt and Terry Dow, who started studying like this kind of problem or restrictions in, in finite fields. So I cannot give a much better motivation in here than what they wrote, but basically they wrote that it was not so it was a sad thing that it was not so that not many people thought about these kind of problems because uh, in general for many reasons the first one is that in general finite fields are a very good model for studying like Euclidean uh, problems afterwards because you eliminate some of the of the of the technicalities that appear in the continuous case so that's a good thing also uh, in general here you can use uh, some tools from number theory and from and from combinatorics things. So it, it gives you another tool, uh, another set of tools to use to your, try to attack your problem. And also, but the other, the other hand, like they appear another kind of difficulties. For instance, you cannot use like induction of in scales. You cannot use Taylor series approximations or anything that uses the well ordering of R. So it's kind of another kind of problem, but also has like a similar flavor. So, but it uses more combinatorics and number theoretical things, so that may that, that, that may helps help for your for your kind of cases. So now, an important result in this in this direction was that the one obtained by Beer in two thousand eight nine something like that. In, well, you can you can um, you can write like a similar problem than the Kakeya problem that I brought at the beginning is like uh, in the finite field case. In the finite field, is, since it's like a vector space, you also have like a notion of lines. So the question see, is like you define a Kakeya set as like a, a set that contains a line in each direction. That is the definition in, in, the, in the finite field case. And you want to know if a, if a set that has this property necessarily need to be, to be big. That would be like the question. Um, well, Beer uh, was the one that managed to solve this to prove that in general it should be big, a big set. Um, and he introduced some tool that is called like the polynomial method, that also was uh, very useful afterwards in, in many problems in harmonic analysis. So it was a, that's an example of a, a result that, uh, that comes from the finite field case that later had some applications in, in the more uh, Euclidean settings. And also another kind of uh, motivation uh, for, for finding fields can be found in, in the talk of, uh, of the previous talk of Professor Yosevich, in which like he he relates this kind of uh, finding field cases to, to some problems of, of, rec of sign of recovery that, uh, that is something that I found very interesting. Okay, so okay, here so let's define the, the things that we need to use for our, our problem here in, in finite fields. If you, if you have like a, a set that we will call a surface, but in general could be any finite set, um, you can define what is the... You can define the extension, the Fourier extension here, as this expression here, where uh, where the, this exponential here is, is defined using the trace of the, of the finite field. 
and uh, what addresses this expression here. In any case, uh, if you are not so interested in the in the final free case, and you can focus in the you can focus on the FP case, just in the in the question of C by by a PC, in which uh, you in which you can get uh, in, in which the here this is just the identity, and the, all the Fourier things uh, are, are are the same. So this gets simplified. But we will try to enunciate anything, everything in the full generality of the finite fields because it adds some, some difficulty and it's also very interesting. Okay, so, well, you can define everything here, like in general, but as I told you before, the, the results in general you need to be very lucky to get one. So in general, you try to start, in first, in, start first in the cases in which uh, you have more structure. So these are the cases in which we will focus now, and are the paraboloid in, in the, the version of the paraboloid in the finite field case. Also, you have the, the, the version of the cone, and also you have some something that is like the hyperbolic, the, you know, the hyperbolic paraboloid <laughs> that is defined like this. That is also important for our purposes. Okay. So, okay, so first Mockenhausen and Tao obtained some estimates from the L2 to L4 inequalities here for the parabola, paraboloid, and cone. And, okay, and they could prove in some way that the, the restriction implies Kakeya recently in, in 2019. Well, we already know that Kakeya is true, but we have now a formal proof of, of this. Okay. So it's a, it's a restriction uh, conjecture in in like uh, in finite fields, this is still an open problem. So, well, since we are already mentioned about like the, the what is restriction in finite fields, and also we talk a lot about what is like just certain inequalities in the Euclidean case, we now can try to to say what can we say if we try to combine both? Now, what is like the, the really like the what can we say about some chart extensions, uh, inequalities, chart Fourier extensions, inequalities over finite fields? It's a very natural question to ask. That was, you uh, asked me at uh, some point in, in the past year. And we get the following. Among color results, we, we managed to establish what I, I told you before about the, the Euclidean case, uh, about the parabola and the paraboloid. We managed to get what are the sharp inequalities in this uh, in this case. So these two inequalities are are maximized by constants, and they are like the the translation of the of the Euclidean case to the to the finite field case. And well, so we were very happy <laughs> to, to get these kind of results. And well. I will mention some things that first is like what are the good things that we can find about the uh, finite fields that we don't have in the Euclidean case. So first we, we find that okay. so that you have like the you have some finite structures and, and connections with number theory that are very useful for us because we can use combinatorial methods and we can use some estimates in the in uh, number theoretical estimates or, or kind of results to get some try to get some results of, of this kind. So that's a good thing. But the bad thing is also that we have find this structure and connections with number theory. <laughs> that could be also a bad thing because uh, I, I mentioned I mentioned you in the past that uh, that the that the uh, like. The fact that we have finite structures can be a very uh, a more can be a bad thing in the sense that it turns things more difficult. For instance, the whole argument here uh, was that uh, the convolution of the measure gives like a constant functions inside a support. But I, I never told you what happens in the border in the boundary. Like this is also in the image of the convolution, but and we don't know what happens in this case. But we don't care that much because that's a zero, a zero metric set. But if in the case of like the, in the finite field case, since everything is finite, 
you, 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 know, you, don't have the, you cannot have the luxury of like forgetting about this kind of uh, particular sets and that brings uh, many difficulties and it's very crucial for the results. And also, you, well, uh, as uh, Alex explained very well <laughs> before, the number theory could be like a complicated thing. Like you have to, uh, it's not like a, it could be in, at some point if you were trying to think about some these problems, you, you will need to, to study deeply like the number theoretical aspects of it. So in some points are not so difficult. And for instance, in other points, if it appears like some cluster muscle, it could be much more difficult and you, and you struggle a lot. But this is like kind of like the, the moral of the story. Okay, so you, you cannot get nothing for free. Either. So this, uh, these two inequalities here, you also have the, in the final field case, you also have the, uh, the planter of the source. So you can translate this in, in this expression here to some double sum to some convolution that you can write, maybe write, maybe you may write that like a, a, a double sum. So these inequalities translate to a some more combinatorial version of the, of the inequality. Okay. And this is what uh, you can work he here now. So you translate the previous problem to some problem that is uh, connected with uh, with um, with the sums of this set. So basically, uh, you have a function that is in the in the final field case. You have a function that is restricted to a set, and you and you want to get and the function is restricted to this uh, to this particular surface, and you want to get what is the best inequality that you might that you want to to find here. So the, the, pro the problem from before translates into this uh, problem here that just has like a combinatorial kind of a structure. So for instance, uh, so this set here is just, uh, you, you just take a point in the, in the space and you want to see like in, in how many ways uh, you can sum the, you can get to this point by summing some elements in this uh, in the, in the surface. So that is, uh, that is what, the, and you take the, the product of those, the, the ways that you can get to that element, and you sum them and you get the square here. It's, it's not just, it's not such a complicated thing, but you want to get what is like the, the optimal inequality that you can get here. And that's, that's uh, the, the most difficult thing in, in this product. So well, after you, so in general, we will focus today in this talk in the in the proof of the result that I, will, I mentioned before, of just to, to get for you to get the flavor of how this kind of inequalities are work. We will focus in, in this one. We will get this kind of inequality here. Um, okay. So that translates into for the here for the parabola. That translates to this very simple inequality, um, not simple to prove, but very simple to state. So you get just the, uh, well, you are here in the, in the paraboloid case, parabola case, and you want to, how much time I have? Uh, maybe five, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, so I will summarize it very, very clearly. So you have like the, uh, you have right here the parabola, the parabola, and you have here the, Convolution of the parabola, but now this this uh, this picture will be a little bit misleading uh, because you you are you are take, you, if you take a point here in the space, you want to to see in, in how you can get uh, to a point here in the space by summing two points in the in the parabola, and that you can do the algebra and, and find out. That this is just uh, taking a circle in the in the, in the projection and filling up to, to like to send it to the parabola. It's just uh, you take opposite sides of a circle and you get all the solutions that that they get all the ways that you can sum some two elements of the parabola to get to the third one. So this 
And this set is very important for this kind of results. <laughs> Here, if you take the constants, this is what you expect. That this equality is that, inequality is that. So this is here we define this uh, this set here. That is just what I told you before. You, you go back to the uh, to these points here in the in the parabola, and you go to the projections. These are the projections. So in some way here we are very interested in, in how is the structure of these circles here, um, because they play a role in this inequality. Um, well, so this is what we define here, what are the structures of this set. Now, uh, as I told you, like these sets here are just like isomorphic to some, to some circle. That is like you can prove like formally. So, so this is exactly this. Um, and well, that is uh, what you want to study. So how, here you have like the, the you can, so in the in the number theoretical uh, setting, so if you are if you are thinking about a circle in the in the plane, so you you are interested in on this kind of inequality. Let's say mod p. Let's do let's do think, keep things here. So here in the finite field case, you we have the nice property that the number of solutions of this expression when r is different for from zero. Is, is constant, so that is like a regularizing process in the in the in the finite field case. And you have that uh, you have a singular case here when r is equal to zero, in which uh, this is this may change a lot. So for instance, if you have like a, a p is like a it's congruent to one mod four, this has many solutions, and if it's not, you have like only one solution. So. Uh, here, like the, the, the number theoretical structures of the of the set play a major role, so it's it's very uh, useful to get uh, to write down the, this set of, in which like this right hand side is zero, so that is like right this like this. So and here I wrote the number of solutions of this oh, in the two critical case. It's just a constant when when there is a frame from zero, and you do the computations. But in the case of the k p equals equal one mod four, these kind of solutions are in general like two lines because in the plane. So that geometry changes a lot of the what is the is the is the procedure in, in the case in each case because in the other in the other case it's just the, uh, a couple of zero points. So just to briefly <laughs> finish to the proof of, of the result. I will just sketch it a little bit now. You just uh, decompose the 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 sum, the double sum on this side, in the critical set in which this is zero, and in the critical set set in which it's not zero, and you do a gauge schwarz estimate in the in the non-critical case, and you get this result here, and then you get this very messy expression in which you uh, in which you are in the critical case, and that comes from the from the Boundary result from boundary points in this uh, parallel, and this is the main thing that we study in the in, in our in our proof. That is like the that, that takes more work. How we study this kind of things. So the nice thing is that uh, how, how we and here we use very strongly how we study the structure of the sets, and in particular in the case when when this. Uh, number of solutions is a very simple thing. Uh, we get something that is simpler in the estimates. So all this, all this expression here turns out to, to, to be just like this expression that we can estimate very easily and this is just the maximized by constants. So that is what we, we get in this case. So that's a nice thing. So we have like all this inequality in the Fourier side we translate it to a convolution case and then we use all the number <laughs> three that we know uh, to reduce this expression using Cauchy Schwarz, is starting like very carefully like the, the boundary points to, 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 to get to the result. But well, however, in the case in which like the, the case in which you have like a more complicated structure here, which is just not just two solutions, one solution, you need to, to get to a more sophisticated way. That since I don't have too much time, I will I will 
I may tell you, tell you later if you are very interested. But it's, it's like very, it used very deeply the geometry of the lines and, and the geometry of the, of the space, yeah, of the fine fields of space. For instance, one very counterintuitive thing is that uh, parabolas in the paraboloids in the finite field case, in, when you have this, when you have p equal one mod four, the paraboloids contains lines. So that is like a, a, a kind of an average, and it's like very, very absurd, a very, very tricky thing. That uh, so that gives you like some enemies to fight in your in your proof because the lines are very close to be uh, like better, close to be better than the constants. So so that is like a so you need to fight a lot against those kind of uh, enemies to get the result in this case. So, but, uh, well, maybe if, with a coffee later I can explain you this. It's just uh, a very detailed uh, estimate and you need to be very careful with each. But also, in the other, but on the other hand, when you have a more difficult uh, proof, because you have many inequalities to prove in the middle, you have many uh, functional equations that you may solve. So that would allow you allows you to to characterize the extremizers in an easier way. So that is the case in which we have like uh, EU equal one mod four. So well, uh, we also have some more results for the cone, in which is very important. It's very different the case in which you can take the cone and you take one point in the zero or not. If you, if you have the cone and you remove uh, zero, we get some in, some sharp inequality. But we prove that also that if you put the number zero here, constants are not even in an extra miser. So, so it's a very difficult, a very different kind of problem. Well, but I, I think that that was enough for today. And thank you for your attention.